Hi everybody and welcome to this lab in which we're going to look at the EBS volumes. So as you guys can see I've already, nav I've already logged into my AWS console and what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate into my EC2 instances. So now, now that we know and have a better idea in terms of what EBS volumes are, you know, essentially there are hard disks um, or you can think of them as hard disks of your servers. So within the EC2 dashboard, the EBS volumes, there's an option for elastic block storage. And under there is three options. We have volumes, we have snapshots, and we have the lifecycle manager. So what we're going to take a look at in this lab are the volumes. So as you guys can see, there's currently one volume that I have it, that I have currently in my dashboard. And this volume is attached to that one instance that I have currently running. Because most of the instances that you launch by default, they are EBS backed instances. So for this instance, I have this volume attached. So how do we go about creating volume? So let's say that I have a current server running and it has a 8 gig EBS volume attached. So let's say that um, for this server, you require additional storage and you want to have an attached and additional EBS volume to this instance. So how do we go about creating a volume? Now before I get into that, for each EBS volume, right, there is various information that's available to us for each volume. So for this volume, as you guys can see, there's a volume ID, the size of the hard drive, which, which here is eight gigs. When it was created, whether it's in use, and when we create the new volume, you guys can see the different states that EBS volumes go through. Attachment information uh, in terms of where it is attached and again the dev SDA is a root volume So keep that in mind for instances the dev SDA is always the root volume The volume type and this is the various types such as the GP2 or the IOPS and so on now, Product codes, you know how much IOPS it has um, If it has currently released any raised any alarms so if there's any hardware failure, if there's any issues with the hard drive, then obviously the alarms are going to be raised. Raised a snapshot if there is a snapshot associated with this, the availability zone and the encryption information. So this is the basic information that's available for us in EBS volumes, the description data. And we'll look at the status checks monitoring a little bit later on. So let's say if I wanted to create a new volume, I would simply go up here to create a new volume various information that I can put in there. So first is the volume type and I have multiple options. Basic one is the general purpose SSD or the GP2. And then I also have an option for a provisioned IAP. So if I want again a more performance based hard drive based on what the server is going to be doing, whether it's running an application, whether it's a web server, whether you're gonna host a database on here. So there's provisioned IAPs and then you also have the throughput optimized HDD. So again, this depends on what use this hard drive or this volume is going to be is going to come into. Then we have the cold HDD and the magnetic. So just various options for the hard drive type that we can pick for. Default is the GP2. Size here, we have a minimum size of one gig and a maximum size of 16,000 gigs or essentially 16 terabytes. So that is a max size that we can have for our EBS volume. Anything larger than that, then obviously you have to look at using the EFS or the S3 buckets. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply create a 10 gig. Here are the IAPs for this general purpose SSD. Now these are standard IAPs for the general purpose SSD. If I want to change the IAPs, then I have to select a provisioned IAPs in here, and then I'm able to configure the IAPs that I want for this hard drive, right? So it's minimum 100 all the way up to 64,000 IAPs that I can specify for my EBS volume. Availability zone, which availability zone you want the volume to be available in. Now we have to keep in mind that the availability zone of the EBS volume has to be the same as the instance if you want to attach the EBS volumes to the instance. So what I'm going to do is quickly go back because I do not remember which availability zone the instance is in. So currently I'm in US East 1D. So I have to make sure that the volume that I am creating is also in US East 1D. Throughput again is not applicable since this is general purpose. So if I were to go ahead and change this to throughput optimized, then, then obviously the throughput also comes into play. Snapshot ID, if I want a snapshot to be available on this, um, on this volume also. So let's say that 
I also I'm gonna have a dual boot system or if I'm going to attach this volume later to an instance that I'm going to boot up then I can optionally have a snapshot available or snapshot pre-installed on this volume these snapshots are what are available currently in AWS so basically your IAM or basically your uh, um, AIMs right uh, your Amazon machine images or we can have, let's say, if we have our own customized snapshot backup of our server, we can also select the snapshot ID. If we leave this blank, it's going to basically spin up a blank hard drive or blank volume. We can also encrypt this volume. We can have a master key. We can have AWS manage it through the, through the key MS or the key management system. Here's the information for it, which is the default one. If we have our own customized ones, we can also make that available here. And again, that can be done through the key management service. And here are, we can add tags for this volume. Again, optional information. I'm gonna go ahead and create this volume. There we go. So once I click on close, click on refresh, and we can see that we have our hard drive that is currently available, right? So as, we, as you can see that one hard drive is in use and one is available, both are in availability zone 1B. Currently, you guys can see that this is not attached or anything. There's no product code because there's no snapshot associated with it. Whereas if I select my previous one, there's also a snapshot available with it from the AWS Marketplace. And then it also is attached to an instance. So that's essentially how we would go ahead and create EBS volumes in our EC2 instances.